Peace and blessings. Welcome to another episode of Boss Hijabipreneur. Women often appear to suffer from the misconception that to be successful in business or accepted in society, they have to diminish or denounce their faith or beliefs. As a business coach, I have encountered women cross-culturally who face internal conflict regarding their religious identity, maintaining their family roles, and being their most authentic selves. I developed this podcast to help guide them back to reclaiming their faith, better define their roles as women, so they can own their identity, live their absolute best life, and be a powerhouse in business. Let's tune in to today's episode, Already in Progress. Welcome back to our oldie but goodie listeners, and welcome new listeners. Did you know the average person makes 15 mindless decisions every day? That's 5,475 decisions in a year made on autopilot. No thought to the outcome or the accuracy of the decision. What can then be said about the important decisions we need to make for our life when so many of our decisions on a daily basis are being made subconsciously? Some of you may be thinking, like me, my brain is on overload. I wouldn't mind having a few decisions I can make without thinking. Let's chat about a few things you can do on autopilot every day. If, you like, if you're like me, when I was getting my kids off to school in the morning before school and before work, I could nearly tell, I, I, could, I, I could hardly tell you what we ate for breakfast. That's number one. And then everything was a mad dash for the car to get them to the school bus on time and you name it. How many of you have thought of the cup of coffee or breakfast order you make at Starbucks every day? You probably don't even think about it. It's probably become second nature at this point. When is the last time you actually enjoyed that cup of coffee or tea? When was the last time you sat to savor the flavor? Do you take the same route to work every day? How many of you can honestly say you remember the details of every light, right, or left turn you you made to drive into work? If you really stop and think about it, you don't know how you made it to work today. Dangerous stuff, okay? And so um, I've done it. You know, I've done it where, you know, um, I used to take like this really windy uh, road to work. And um, I can remember like, you know, there's a portion of the road that like you have to stop at this stop sign. And I remember one day getting to work and, and wondering if I had actually stopped at the stop sign or if I just blew through the stop sign, just made that right and just kept on going about my way. Um, you know, what's even more dangerous about, you know, being like me and probably having gone through that stop sign is choosing a life that makes you miserable and to continue to actively choose it by not choosing the life you truly want, by not paying attention, by not being conscious. In today's episode, my goal is to help you stop for a moment and begin to start taking active ownership of your life by giving you five tips on how to live life by design, not by default. As you're listening to this portion of the episode, I hope you're on your lunch break. I want you to actually physically stand up. Stand up with your feet shoulder width apart, your palms at your side, and I want you to shake off any negative emotions from the day or just your life in general. I'm doing it with you guys, okay? Breathe deeply in and out. Inhale the good and deeply exhale out the negative. Can you tell I just started back taking yoga? So I went to a yoga class last night. It was actually cat yoga. So um, it was actually uh, pretty amazing. Um, So uh, it's actually a facility right in uh, Chinatown, actually, um, in New York City. It's called the Meow Parlor. And basically, uh, these are cats that are available for adoption. They're eligible for adoption. And they're in the room with you as you are, um, you know, doing your yoga practice. So it was pretty amazing. And so just a group of women, I think there were like 11 women in the class and, um, you know, just practicing yoga. And then um, we were able to spend about 30 minutes with the cats. So about 45 minutes for our yoga session and another 30 minutes just hanging around with the cats. Um, There were some cuties there. So they were 
so cute. So um, they're eligible for adoption. But um, just to get back to um, the the exercise and just, um, you know, what I want you to do, like just, um, you know, those breathing exercises that you do in yoga. So maybe you don't participate in yoga. Maybe that's not your thing. But um, the breathing exercises I have found very helpful in my life. I think I've been practicing yoga for probably about seven to eight years. And the breathing exercises are what I find really enjoyable, especially when you're able to uh, kind of focus in on a part of your body that you may be experiencing stress or anxiety, and you're able to breathe your way out of it. I did it last night. So um, I had, uh, what did I do? I did some exercise in the morning. And so when I got to class last night and we were like laying flat on the mat with our backs to the mat, um, there was a portion of my back that I could tell that there was some stress and some tension. And um, when she got to the part where she says, OK, if you are experiencing any, you know, tension in the body, any stress in the body, um, you know, uh, just focus on it with your mind, close your eyes and then breathe it out. And literally I did that. And within about five to 10 seconds, um, it felt like all of the weight, all of that pressure that was in that part of my back was gone. So um, I, I'm one I will attest to the breathing exercises that are found in yoga. So if you don't, uh, you know, feel like yoga is something that you want to practice now or in the future, that's OK. But take some of the breathing techniques that are found in yoga. They're really, really and truly amazing. So with today's um you know, um, breathing exercises, right? And what we just did, just continue to inhale, you know, that which is good and exhale out that which is bad. If you're you're already having a bad day at work or something like that, listen, it's okay. It happens to all of us, um, you know, you know, whatever heaviness that you're feeling, anxiety or stress, um, I want you to, as you breathe, I want you to feel it leave your body. So as you do this two minute breathing exercise, I want you to let go of who you think you are supposed to be and embrace who you actually are. I think a lot of our tension comes from that, like, especially for me, like tension, anxiety, stress shows up for me when I'm in a situation where I may not necessarily like what's happening and I'm not expressing that I don't like what's happening or I don't get up and leave the situation, excuse myself and leave the situation. I find that when I'm in a situation where, you know, I'm, you know, I don't agree or I don't see a way where, you know, this, this, that situation fits me, you know, instead of leaving it, I sit there and then I don't say anything. And those are the, usually when I experience tension and stress and, you know, just anxiety because I'm not, you know, being my most authentic self in that moment, which is probably to step up and say something, right? So, um, or not say something. Sometimes, you know, a situation, it's best to just leave it and not say anything. But me leaving it and not saying anything would be the same as me. You know, I'm making a conscious decision. Hey, this is this is who I am. This is, this is what I'm willing to put up with. And this is what I'm not, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I want you to, after you um, you know, just say this affirmation, you know, um, you know, to yourself, um, I want you to say, you are amazing. You are phenomenal. You are the best at what you do. And there isn't anything you can't do because God has equipped you with everything you need to conquer every single moment. And I want you to say that to yourself as many times as you need to, um, so that you feel convicted in it. And whether it's reciting Quran under your breath, a silent dua or dhikr, say to yourself, everything I need in every moment of my life, I have and I am. I say this a lot when I go onto stage, right before I go onto stage. Um, I'm always fearful of, you know, right before I go on stage and the fear subsides because, you know, um, I say that I'm excited. I say that this is something that I'm going to enjoy. And then I say to myself, everything I need in this moment I have and I am. And when I say that, I find this, you know, courage within myself and then I go out there and I just am myself. And the more that we are ourselves, the more that we are authentic to ourselves, the more that we will sh we will see that people are drawn to us because people are drawn to authenticity and people are drawn to truth. And so now we're ready for our five tips on how to live life by design and not by default. So just relax into it and just, um, you know, follow along with these tips. So tip one to living the life you want is to first make the decision to do so. Many of us, as I said earlier, subconsciously make decisions in our life. Our responses can be based on our past negative or positive experiences. At other times, I find in most and in, I find it in most cases, we make a decision based on what feels comfortable. 
So I'll give you a perfect example. I no longer eat meat, but when I did, no matter the country, no matter the restaurant and the many new delectable items that were on the menu, I ordered a cheeseburger. This is true story, you guys. So like uh, there was a time that I was in Brazil. Uh, there was another time that I was in Mexico. Um, another time um, I was in Puerto Rico. I've probably in every country that I've ever been to, I've ordered a cheeseburger off of the menu. But anyway, so um, no matter what was going on, I ordered a cheeseburger well done with caramelized onions, ketchup, tomato, relish, and no lettuce. So I don't know about you, but um, a lot of times when you get like um, lettuce, when you get like a cheeseburger at a restaurant, I'm not sure at what stage they put the lettuce on the burger, but in most cases, the lettuce kind of is like becomes soggy once it's on like the burger. I want a crisp piece of lettuce. I want like the lettuce to be the last thing to go on the sandwich because I don't like soggy um, lettuce. So I, when I go out, I normally order my cheeseburger with no lettuce, but it's not because I'm against lettuce. It's just that I just don't like that soggy situation. But anyway, so me ordering this cheeseburger is pre predictable, but not always what I wanted. Like the reason why I ordered the cheeseburger is because I know that I won't be disappointed by the cheeseburger. Like you got to really be like a bad chef for you to make like a bad cheeseburger. Okay. I don't think I've ever had, um, you know, a bad cheeseburger. So, um, yeah, it's like the go-to meal. I know that what will happen. I know exactly how it's going to taste and all that good, um, kind of stuff. So I was content with what I knew and fearful of the disappointment I may have experienced if I tried something new and then didn't like it. The problem with that sort of thinking is, is that I also cut myself off from possibly experiencing something amazing and new. So as I said earlier, you know, I traveled to Brazil. Who travels to Brazil and orders a cheeseburger anyway? And I will tell you a quick uh, short story about Brazil. So I was in Brazil for two weeks, um, I think 2005, uh, something like that, 2005, some, 2006. I can't remember the year. But um, I, then uh, we went to this uh, place, it's called Lagoa de Confusão, and um, it's actually the Lake of Confusion, right? And the reason why they call that is because there are three mountains, and depending on where you're standing, all three of the mountains look the same. So um, the, the person who discovered, um, you know, that particular um, lake, um, you know, uh, he when he came back the next time, he didn't quite know where he was going. And so that's why they call it, call it Lagoa de Confusão, and so just the Lake of Confusion. But anyway, um, when I went there, you know, um, they were making these, uh, they were making fish. And I'm not quite sure what type of fish it was. I want to say it was like tuna, um, because it was steak like and it was very thick and very white and there were some bones in it. But um, and it's called tucanare. I don't know what the translation is um, in um, English. So I don't know what type of um, fish that is. But if any of our listeners are from Brazil or have been to that part of the world and know what tucanare is, um, please um, let me know. Let me know what type of fish it is. And so um, I'm eating, you know, I'm, I, I see how they're making this fish. First of all, they're wrapping the fish in newspaper and then they're putting it in the oven and they're baking it, right? So first of all, New Yorker, um, we're not putting anything in some newspaper. So I was first like, oh God, what is going to happen here? Right. So that was the first thing. And so again, kind of this comfort, me being in my comfort zone and saying, okay, well, a cheeseburger will hit the spot right about now. But I said, you know what? I'm going to try something new. I've already had a cheeseburger on this trip. We're not doing this. We're in Brazil. We're going to experience the food from Brazil. And so they cook this fish. And again, still fearful. I put a very small portion on my plate, not enough to like, you know, satiate my appetite or anything like that. And, you know, I put it on my plate and to my surprise, it was delicious. Now I went with a group of people. I think there were like 10 or 12 of us, something like that. And by the time I went back to refill my plate and probably put a heaping full of that fish on my plate, guess what? The fish was gone. So I said, okay, no problem. We're at a restaurant. I'm going to order another. Guess what? The fish that we had was the last fish that was caught of the day and they weren't going to make any fish. It was like four o'clock in the afternoon. So it was the last fish of the day that we had consumed in my little tiny portion. It was the only day that we were there. And so, um, you know, I just missed out. I missed out. So I enjoyed the fish. And then when I wanted to have more of it, I couldn't. It was because I held myself back from fully immersing myself into that experience. And so what I wanna say is, is that, you know, when we are, you know, making this decision to, to live life by design, we wanna make sure that we are, you know, setting our intention to do so and, and being open 
So the, the, the key to that was, okay, I was open when I booked the trip. I was open when I went and got my visa. I was open when I got on the plate, flight. But then, you know, I, I got out of my comfort and then I was searching for safety. And so I went back into my shell and I wasn't able to experience that. So the outcome of our lives are set by intention. You will reap what you intend. And I'm going to say this again, you will reap what you intend. And so make sure that even subconsciously, even when you're not you know, when you feel like you're not consciously making a decision, those thoughts that come into your mind, if they're negative, those are you setting intentions. So be mindful of them. And when they creep up, revert your attention, your, your intentions, go, you know, go and say, you know what, um, this is what I actually want. So when you get into that negative space, make sure that you, you get back into a positive space. And one of the things that you can do is the breathing exercise that we just did at the beginning of the episode. You see how everything has a purpose, right? So that breathing exercise, exercise wasn't just to do it. It was to give you a tool that you can use throughout your day, throughout your week, throughout your month, throughout your year that can help you to reset and refocus and get back and get grounded in exactly what you want to, to happen versus the spiraling of what is happening right now. So I want you to take a moment to write down your intentions for your life. As you're writing, vibrate higher. What would the next level of who you are now set as her intentions? So the next level of Halima, she may set her intentions at, you know, running a seven figure business and knowing what it's like to put together events for, uh, you know, six figure business owners so that I can then build my business to be a seven figure business. That would be an intention that I would set. Another intention, um, you know, for my life, I'm always, you know, focused on the spiritual because nothing, uh, you know, uh, will manifest in my life if I'm not connected to Allah, if I'm not connected to God, and, and I don't have that um, firm foundation in that connection. And so for me, you know, is uh, the tough seed. I've been talking about this. I think this is now the third episode, but I'm um, really just diving into tough seed and really understanding what I'm reading in the Quran. It's one thing to, you know, read the Quran, uh, you know, in Arabic, then possibly translate it into your native language, English, Spanish, whatever, you know, whatever your, your mother tongue is, right? Translating into that. And then it's another thing to read the tafsir and find out, you know, just the true meaning behind, you know, why was the surah put out? You know, what what, what was the what was the thinking? You know, what was the thought process in, in this surah? You know, how is how can it help you, um, you know, in your life? And so for me, um, you know, every surah that I learn, every surah that I read is also knowing the tafsir and also, you know, knowing the, the, the English version and knowing my native tongue, too. You know, sometimes it's lost in translation. So that's another thing, you know, learning the Arabic language so that, you know, when I read it in Arabic, I don't lose any of the translation that may possibly happen when it's translated into my mother tongue. Right. So. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, one of one of my things, you know, as far as what uh, an intention that the next level of Halima would have for her life, you know, so the Halima of five years ago was content with memorizing the Quran, right, in Arabic. And then, you know, the, the Halima of three years ago, you know, wanted to, to make sure that she understood the meaning. And now the Halima of today wants to make sure that, you know, not only is, does she understand it and, 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 and how to apply it to her life, but then how does she apply it to her life? So, um, you know, one of the things is, you know, just just thinking and setting our intentions at the next level. So on my um, so on your vision board and then again every month. So what you can do is you can, you know, have your vision board for the year, which I love. I love having a vision board for the year. There have been years where I have written down just words on my vision board um, and then a combination of words and pictures a com and, and then some years just pictures. Right. This year is another year with words and pictures on my um, particular vision board. And then every month, just reviewing your vision vision board at the beginning of the month, and then again, setting and possibly renewing your intentions. So um, sometimes our intentions change. Sometimes, you know, our focus changes. Sometimes, you know, okay, we have this vision that we set for the year and we, we you know, we had it written out, hey, I'm going to do this in April and I'm going to do this in May. And then things happen and, and, and you have to shift and you have to adjust. So uh, sometimes you may need to re renew your intentions and sometimes you may need to set an intention and refocus. So why are you doing X, Y, and Z? Why do you go to work every day? If you decided to take on a part-time job or business, why are you doing it? I remember when, um, you know, my son was young and, you know, I worked my full-time job. I made good money during that full-time job, but I wanted to take a vacation 
one by myself and then one with my son. And, you know, no matter how much I saved in my full-time job, I was not going to be able to afford to take both of the vacations that I wanted to take. So what I did was, is I took a part-time job and, you know, there were days where I was tired. There were days that I left my job at five o'clock and then I had to be at the next job at six o'clock. And then I worked from six um, to almost about one o'clock in the morning. Right. And, you know, for me, it was just like, you know, I had to remember why was I doing this? I envisioned myself. I imagined myself myself, you know, on a beach or, you know, in Disney World with my son. And that was the way that I was able to get myself through it. Right. And so whatever your intention is, whatever you're setting your goals for, your intentions for, just making sure that you are, you know, you are refocusing your intention and that your intention is, um, good. You know, you want to make sure that your intentions are good and that, you know, the, the, you know, the goal you have set for yourself is it will help other people, not just yourself. Right. Um, so always keep other people in focus. So just segueing right into this um, piece here, it's always keeping other people in focus while you're achieving your goals for yourself. Will me um, making asking for extra money at work help my family? Will me, you know, working for extra money help my family? Will it help my community? And then how will it help? The more specific the intention, the more convicted, focused, and intention you will become in your life. Just like me going to that second job, there were days that I were t- I was tired, but then I, re- you know, I focused on, you know what, I'm tired right now, but I will get sleep. And then, you know, when when I, you know, when I'm able to do this thing with my son, I'm able to spend this time with my son. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna sit in gratitude for all of the sacrifice that I put into it. Tip number two. People, people, people. Okay, I'm going to be real honest with you guys. Life would be far less complicated if we could all be hermits and live in caves. But that's not the reality, and we are not designed that way. We were designed as social creatures and to interact with one another. And our lives are truly enriched by the pe- people we meet along the path. Like, I've met so many amazing people in the last five years. Like, you know, I had, I've always had been surrounded by amazing people. Um, you know, I've had some people that have been a part of learning, that have been a part of the test, and I am grateful for them as well. But I've, I, I have to say that it, there are an innumerable amount of people that I have met along, um, you know, the path that have been amazing. They, they, they have taught me many things. And they have truly, you know, brought happiness and, you know, more happiness and enrichment um, to my life. I've been able to learn a lot from those um, people. And the beauty of living life by design and being more intentional is we have control over the people we allow into our space. We can choose the people who we walk down the path with. So work intentionally to surround yourself with people and as many people as you can that are like minded. People who are just as optimistic about their faith, their life, their business, and maybe even your business idea as you are. You know, I will tell you, you know, I've joined mastermind groups. I've been in networking, uh, you know, situations where, you know, I've come across people that didn't necessarily match my spirit, didn't necessarily match my direction. And, you know, I introduced myself, you know, I spent some time with them and then I parted ways and I had to part ways because uh, there was an energy exchange that didn't quite match and, and, and may have been a little too negative for me. And so I had to remove myself um, from that situation. I'm sure people have encountered me and maybe felt that, you know, I was not, you know, something that they could, you know, align with. That's okay. We're not meant to be for everyone. You know, God didn't create us to be likable um, to everyone. There are a certain amount of people that are assigned to us. There are a certain amount of people that we are meant to interact with. And not everyone is meant to stay. You know, some people are, you know, here for, how, how is it, to teach us a lesson. Um, some people are here for, you know, a season. And then there are those people that are here for a lifetime. And a lot of those people that are here for a lifetime um, are people that grow with you. People that, you know, when you were, you know, 16 and, you know, you guys were friends, you know, they were right in line with you. And then as you guys have gotten older, as you have grown, as you have built businesses or whatever the case may be, as you have moved up in your career, as you have become a parent, they have been a part of that process and they have grown with you and they have shared um, in your life with you. So, you know, don't worry about the people that are here to teach you the lesson and don't worry about the people that are here for a season, you know, 
um, embrace them, you know, love on them in the moment and then move on once, you know, their, their, their time has passed. And then you, you know, just make sure you hold on to those people that are those um, lifetime um, people. It's the same thing with, um, you know, what you, what you want for your life. You know, some uh, projects you will work on for a short amount of time. Some projects you will work for a long time. Uh, You know, I know people that have worked at a company 40, 50 years, like that is, you know, that was written for them. And so, you know, they've been able to hold on um, to, to that because they've been able to grow with the company as the company shifted, as it, as it uh, made changes, as it downsized, as it, you know, uh, started hiring, you know, new people they were able to shift and they were able to grow in the direction of the company. And so that's why they have um, that longevity. You are a reflection of the five people you hang around the most. It's okay to start off on the journey broke. So again, just going back to those people that, you know, I hung around when I was 16 years old, some people even, you know, earlier, as young as two, right? I have people that have been in my life since I was two years old as friends, as family, and, you know, friends that became family, and they have grown through, you know, going through gone through and grown through a lot of things um, with me. And it's okay to start off broke. Um, It's even okay to start off broken. But um, make sure that you're hanging around people that are next level and that are looking to continue to level up and evolve and, and grow just like you. So there's no more hanging around people. So 2020 is the year that we stop hanging around people who are not only broke in their pockets, but have broken mindsets. So Um, You know, again, it's okay to start out broke, but we don't want to end up the year broke. Um, And if we do end up the year broke, we want to at least have a lesson as to and and, and be able to say, you know what, I'm still broke this at the end of the year. But, you know, I made money this year and I'm broke because I reinvested it or I'm broke because, you know, I planted some seeds or something like that. That's a that's different. You know what I mean? That's that's actually growth. That's not, you know. Um, you know, that's not, um, you know, having being stuck and staying in the same place. But people who have a broken mindset and don't believe that they can achieve, don't believe that others can achieve or want to bring people down, we're not hanging around any more of those type of people. So be careful of those type of people. When you are in situations and you're in spaces and you share an idea and the person's first thing that they talk about, the first thing that they say out of their mouth, oh, that's never going to work. You want to make sure that you uh, bid those people a great day and and just remove yourself from the situation and start hanging around people. And you don't want to hang around yes people. I'm not talking about yes people who yes you to death and every idea that comes out of your mouth they agree with. No. I'm talking about people that um, when they say to you, oh, I don't think that idea is going to work, but then they say, you might want to try this. And the reason why I say this is because X, Y, and Z. Those are people that truly have your best interest um, you know, at heart, not people who immediately say, oh, that's never going to work. And how long are you going to stick to that? Get rid of those people. And I don't mean it in a, in a, a nasty way or in a negative way. I mean it as limit your the amount of time and the things that you tell um, those uh, type of people, right? So again, 2020, we're, we're focused on, you know, moving forward. So those who are not focused, we're not moving forward with them. Um, those type of people are content with very little. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about doing just enough in every area of their life to get by. God wants and expects so much more from us. He avails himself to us at the level of expectancy we have for him. If we expect, expect a little, he will give us a little. If we expect more, he will give us more in every area of our life, inshallah. I'm talking bigger faith, better relationships with family and friends, and better finances to facilitate the worldly life we want, which in turn builds our life in the akhirah, inshallah. Tip three, write down your goals. I think I say this like a million times. I think I've, I've talked about this like a lot. Ramadan, I'm going to, you know, kind of tie in Ramadan and how uh, writing down goals will manifest the Ramadan that you want, right? Um, Ramadan is the holy month of fasting for Muslims. We look forward to it because of its spiritual meaning and its beauty and the beauty and worship we experience in the month. But how many of us actively prepare for it by setting goals for what we want to accomplish in it? How do we prepare our bodies, mind, and heart for this blessed month? 
I'd heard once that athletes don't prepare for the championship during the season. They prepare for it in the off season. It reminds me of the Sahaba, um, you know, around the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, you know, they, they, you know, they are said to, uh, when do they begin fasting? Um, and it is said that directly after Ramadan ends, they begin fasting and they begin preparing for the next Ramadan. Um, you know, it just brings you to tears at, you know, just their steadfastness, um, you know, in faith. But, you know, one of the things that I'll remind you of, you know, fasting Mondays and Thursdays and some of the things that we can do, fasting Mondays and Thursdays and every 13th, 14th and 15th of the month and during the month of Shaban, which are all sunnahs of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's the same for Ramadan and other areas of, of our lives. We come, we become or have success in what we repeatedly do. So how do we prepare for the 30 days of Ramadan? How do we prepare to get the best experience from Ramadan? We do it outside of the month of Ramadan, inshallah. In our Bar Jabi planner, we have four pages that I dedicated to writing down your short-term and long-term goals for 2020 and beyond. So our Boss Hijabi planner is actually an undated planner. I think I got asked this question a few times and I want to make sure that I clarify. Um, the Boss Hijabi planner is an undated planner and we did this on purpose because of course we're introducing a new product. No one has ever seen a planner come from us and uh, we are one of the first to actually have a printed planner that is made for women of faith like many of you that are listening right now. And so what we wanted is we wanted to you know, advertise it. We wanted to to uh, make sure that we could get this in the hands of as many women as we possibly could. And, um, you know, we wanted it to be where she could start it at any time and not feel like uh, she was missing out on anything. So, you know, um, sometimes when you buy a planner in March, it's like, oh man, you know, I wasted all these pages from January, February, um, and January and February, and now we're in March. And then I'm, you know, I'm not getting the full benefit of the planner. So we wanted everyone that got the planner to get the full benefit. benefit. So it's undated. And if you need it can be used at any time during the year and you can start your year in March if you want to. So you can go from March to March. It's a 12 month undated calendar. So um, in the planner, again, um, we just have, I have an area where you can write down your short term and your long term goals. Um, the reason why I put this in there is because I recently read that the act of writing down your goals multiple times and rereading them helps you to stay laser focused on what you want and you are more likely to attract and achieve it. You can make it a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly habit to write down your goals. Um, and I would love to hear your hear back from you one month down the line if this practice has helped you manifest more in your life. And so, you know, perfect example uh, for uh, the month of Ramadan, what we're doing is um, actually tomorrow, uh, we are starting a, a class. It's called the Pre-Ramadan Challenge, and it's a four-week class. And basically what we're doing is, is we're covering things like, you know, what Ramadan is. You know, the benefits of Ramadan, recovering, you know, how do you, you know, make the best of Ramadan? How do you prepare for Ramadan? You know, mentally, spiritually, uh, you know, physically, you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, you know, we begin fasting day one of Ramadan and like that, boom, you know, it's like it started, you know what I mean? And a lot of us struggle through that first week, that second week. And then we're in the middle of Ramadan before we catch our stride. And then by the time we catch our stride, Ramadan is over. And so, you know, with, with planning, with, uh, you know, writing down your goals, I want you to be intentional and I want you to start from now, right now, we're still in the month of January. We still, have about three months to go, uh, inshallah, before the start of Ramadan. And so just want to, you know, make sure that we're focusing on, you know, what we want to get out of Ramadan before it even starts. So when we start day one, we actually have that feeling as if we would have had on day 15, um, you know, where we were smack dab in the middle of Ramadan. So I want you to start, you know, day one of Ramadan, like you would feel day 15 of Ramadan, inshallah. So, um, you know, just, and, and just with anything, you know what I mean? Just, you know, practicing, you know, I will tell you the the way that, you know, I practice a speech or the way that I practice being on a panel or speaking on a podcast or whatever the case may be, the way that I practice is by every day, every day, the conversations that I have with people, every day that I interact with people, just honing in on and, and being intentional about what I talk about, what type of conversations I engage in, the people that I, that I engage with, et cetera, et cetera. So tip four, choose your path. Don't be afraid to choose your own path, no matter how lonely it may seem at first. 
Mo most people will think you're out of your mind for wanting to do anything that is seemingly out of the norm. When I started my first company and left my first corporate job 15 years ago, my mother thought I was nuts. She said, how will I live? How will you pay your mortgage? How will you feed your son? I love my Omi, but I had to quiet her voice as I built my six-figure business. A year later, she was a believer and asked me how I did it. My older brother even came to work for me on many of our commercial projects. So, um, you know, just, just you know, sometimes you have to quiet even the, vo the, the, the voices that are the most concerned about you, the voices that most love you. Sometimes you have to quiet them in order to be able to manifest and achieve the dreams and the goals that you want for your life. When I came, another example is when I came back to practicing in Slam, many of my friends who had come to love as family fell by the wayside. They couldn't understand what I was doing. You know, as non-Muslims, they were questioning, why was I now wearing hijab, especially in the climate that we're in, and not participating in some of the activities I had once participated in. Their concerns came up despite practicing Islam, making me a better person, feeling more fulfilled, and building a firmer foundation for myself. In the end, I understand their concern was in protecting me, as I said a little bit earlier, and making sure I was good. The same may go for you, but only God and you can ultimately determine what's best for you. So don't be afraid to strike out on your own, just like my Omi and my brother. Once they saw what I built, they'll come back around and support you. Tip five, be disciplined and make it a way of life. I came across a truly profound live last year on IG. Um, please don't ask me who was speaking. I don't remember, but the, I remember the gentleman hosting the live said, discipline goes, but so far. When you make something your lifestyle, your value system, the way you live, think and breathe, that's impenetrable. Make choosing how you want to live your life, your lifestyle. Imagine you're having the worst day as a mom, a believer, as an employee or an entrepreneur, and you are able to change the situation around by being grateful to be in the position you are to have a bad day. A bad day as, as a mom means you are in fact a mom. Some have not been afforded that opportunity. Be grateful, then look for a solution to the bad day. Maybe you enlist the help of a family member or friend so you can take a break for the day. As an employee, you have a job. Some are unemployed. How can you be grateful and then look for the solution? As a believer, you messed up. You missed a prayer. Be grateful. You are a believer. Some are lost and don't have a belief system of their own and are still so searching. So what adjustments can you make to your schedule so you don't miss prayer in the future or you don't have the same mishap in the future? As an entrepreneur and as all the other examples, saying no to things not only takes discipline, but focus and intention. Don't let the shiny things or even people distract you from your goal. Sometimes you have to say no to people so you can say yes to yourself. Every project I've worked on for my company, there is something I've had to give up. Sometimes it's time with friends, time with family, traveling, which I love, love, love to do, but I gave up traveling for about a year and a half um, so that I could, you know, manifest certain things in my business. So I, I was able to, um, you know, just reinvest the money that, you know, I made back into my business. Trust me, it has all been worth it. And the sacrifice I made three to five years ago, I'm reaping the benefits and rewards now. Keep choosing the life you want. Live life by design. I'll talk to you next week. Peace. My inspirational quote of the week, on the authority of Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, who said that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah the Almighty said, I am as my servant thinks I am. I am with him when he makes mention of me. If he makes mention of me to himself, I make mention of him to myself. And if he makes mention of me in an assembly, I make mention of him in an assembly better than it. And if he draws near to me an arm's length, I draw near to him a cubit. And if he draws near to me a cubit, I draw near to him a fathom. And if he comes to me walking, I go to him at speed, at timidity. If you found this episode to be helpful, please subscribe, share with your colleagues and friends, and be sure to leave us a testimonial that we can share with our listeners. If you have a business or product and would like to sponsor an episode, 
please email the word sponsor to info at bunhd.com for more details. Peace. This has been another spectacular episode of Boss Hijabipreneur, brought to you by BUNHD LLC and the Not Without My Hijab stage play. To find out more about services for women of faith and business and the next city up on the tour, visit www.bunhd.com. It is our hope here at BUNHD that after each episode, you will be empowered to have a deeper connection in your spirituality, personal, and business relationships. As women of faith, we have a responsibility to learn our religion, apply it to our daily lives, and to make a positive contribution in our local and global community.